right? Um, just to begin, where did the idea come from for the film, and how long ago was that? How many years ago did the original idea? Sure. Well, there were there were, there were sort of two stages to the idea. The first uh, was ten years ago, actually. Uh, the DreamWorks uh, put out a contest to the develop ideas, and I submitted this idea, which was essentially the Fast and the Furious with snails. It won the contest. They bought the idea. I ended up going off on about three or four different projects that took me about four or five years before I could really kind of further get it forward. Uh, and then by that point, I'd had uh, a, you know a boy. Uh, who's now six, and he, from a very, very young age, was just obsessed with his cars, just racing them around the living room. And, uh, and my front yard of this house that I was living in had a snail problem. So this juxtaposition of fast things and slow things right in my, you know, my own universe at home was the catalyst, the, the kind of the bones of this story. But when you presented the original idea, was it was it about snails? Was that the yeah? It was about it was a Fast and the Furious with snails. Right, right. That was basically <laughs> the long and the short of it. And then I was just um, like, all right, what is that story? How do we how do, how do we make this? How, do, how does this sustain itself? Well, what was the most challenging part about the about the, the script or the plot on the one hand, the story, and what was the most challenging part about the animation? Uh, the the story was really just uh, trying to find. Uh, you know, it's an underdog story, so it's just trying to stack Turbo's life with all these obstacles, uh, both physical and emotional, and and create these characters that uh, people could suspend their disbelief in terms of watching a movie about a snail and really kind of go on this emotional journey with Turbo and his brother Chet uh, and, and believe it, you know, and believe, get invested in it. Uh, in terms of the animation, a snail is very limiting, you know, there's 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 no arms, there's no legs, the, the facial features, you don't have the eyebrows, the, you know, the nose, the wrinkles in some ways that a human does. So we, we had to really uh, do a lot of work to try to make them appealing and expressive and find a lot of different ways of having them emote and physically get around. Uh, and, and that ended up being actually a great asset to the movie because it just makes it all much more original uh, and, and more entertaining. There's um, the, the, the one scene where there's an absurd conversation about uh, paying the bills and if snails right. pay the bills. Right. Um, it, it made me think that uh, see, there always needs to be some humor directed to adults. Is, do, do you, when you create a film, do you think as well as like, I need 20% of uh, humor that, for adults or and the rest for children? Do, do you make kind of that kind of calculation? No, I, don't, it, I never think about it. Mean? Yeah, I never think about it. Certainly there's no stats or, or math involved. Uh, I'm not good at math anyway, so... Uh, but the, if for me, it's just what feels right. What does the scene feel like it needs uh, to make to entertain myself, or to you know feel something, or to uh, propel the story forward? You know, there's all these different needs of, that scenes have. Um, so in that case, it was just you know trying to create the personalities of these snails and, and their their style of trash talk needed to be comedic because who wants to see snails delivering straight trash talk, it's not dull, it's not going to be very entertaining. Right. Um, and also the, uh, I found fascinating the, the scene which showed the, the speed and the influence of social media and right. it turned into this, this great song. Right. Um, could you just tell us about that and was there, there was the idea we need to include social media in here because that's, that's so now that we need to have that element or was it just, did it come naturally out of the story? No, it came naturally out of the story because we were... You know, we were trying to figure out a way, you know, sort of two big gimmies of the movie. The first is how he becomes fast, and then the second is how he is allowed ultimately to compete in the Indy 500. And, uh, and this idea of, you know, a kid posting a video online and, uh, and the thing going viral seemed certainly current and, and of the moment, but also a viable way for us to have enough people kind of have this ground, this groundswell of attention uh, and support for him that could that could ultimately overwhelm this CEO into into making this decision happen. Right before you mentioned that uh, that Turbo has a love hate relationship we call it with his brother. Um, <laughs> and there's also a, a Tito has a relationship with yeah. his, a rough relationship with his brother. Did right. They get, uh, could you talk about that? Did that? Did you want that parallelism with the, the human and the, and the snail? Yeah, yeah, I really did. I, I um, it was one of the things as I was developing the story that just made it all feel much more interesting. It felt like the, the 
whole movie uh, was being painted on a bigger canvas when I added the other two brothers to it. Uh, and I liked that it kind of took it away from just a uh, kind of a talking animal movie and brought it into uh, this this different, more human world. And and it also helped from a story standpoint since Turbo's dream is to enter the Indy 500. It was super useful to have a human kind of buddy of his as a conduit to help him uh, through some of that. Perfect. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate right. it. Yeah, Thanks. thank you.